joined by actress Allie Larder. Allie, so great to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. I know you're here just a quick time in New That's York right. and you're going back to set and the set that you're going back to is the set of Pitch, a That's new right. Fox show that premieres later this month. It centers around a woman who is uh, the first Major League Baseball pitcher. Mm -hmm. I love this premise. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about what attracted you to, the, to this role? You don't play her. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of things. One, I mean, we're living in a time of like reboots and procedural dramas, and mm -hmm. this is an original story. And what's also really exciting about it is that it's a what if. We could be one step before this really happens. So it's a story of Ginny Baker and about how she becomes the first female pitcher in the major leagues. And I play Amelia Slater, who's her agent, and I've been working in Hollywood, and I come kind of like disillusioned with the world. It's like mm -hmm. vanity and um, a lot of superficial things. And she sees this clip of Ginny, and she believes that with her help, they could accomplish great things together. So it's really a story of watching these women navigate a very male-centric world. Um, but also about the fact that you know the little girls out there can believe that they can be anything they want to be. Sure. If you put your heart to it, your mind to it, if you work hard, the sky's the limit. And that kind of, that, it's really the, the underbelly of our show is that really kind of inspirational, hopeful feeling. Do you think we're close to that, have, seeing that in real life? I really do. Yeah. I mean, if you look at a male and a female, you're not gonna be able to compare when it comes to strength, but with technique you can. Mm -hmm. And so she's a screwball and a knuckleball and you know, she's technique. And um, I think that would be the way that it would happen. And I think baseball would be the sport. Great. Well, I just want to tell the fans out there that we're live. Check, check in with your comments, your questions, and I'll get to them on the air. Um, I really like, I've watched the pilot episode. I really like what I Thank see you. so far. Uh, the woman who plays the pitcher, she's wonderful. What was it like working alongside her? So Kylie her? Bummery, yep. the luminous, beautiful. It's like she she's literally gorgeous. has a light within her. Yes. She like just glows, and she like she's so wonderful. When we first met, um, we got along instantly, and she is kind of what's happening to her in the show is happening to her in real life. You know, like she becomes like insta-famous on the show and it's happening to her right now because Pitch is getting so much attention. And she's doing her first talk shows and her endorsements and really kind of living also the pressures of when so many people expect so much from you. Sure, there is that pressure. But I mean, I feel like it's getting yeah. so much buzz so far. So, exactly. so far, so good. So far, amazing. And, and just the fact that we're living so many parallels, I yeah. guess, within the story and in our, our personal lives. Yeah, speak about that a little bit with Hollywood. I mean, yeah. I feel like, you know, you've been you've had a nice long Hollywood career so far, a yeah. lot more to come. Yeah. But being up against the male, do in a male dominated industry in right. some ways. Well, I mean, yes, I agree with that. I've been very lucky that I feel like I love the characters that I've gotten to play. There are still many that I still want to explore. I was just talking about it last night that I still know that there's things that I can't wait to kind of dig my teeth into. Um, I think the thing that does rub me though is we talk about things like pay inequality and things like that when you're talking about the exact same job but a different pay. Um, it's crazy that these things are still happening. And so when we talk about like breaking the glass ceiling and that doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your sexual orientation, you should be able to be anything you want in this world. I love that. Um, just coming off of the Olympics though, that was yeah. great. That's reinvigorating seeing yes. very young women like Gabby Douglas. Um, oh yeah. Right? I mean, especially women of color, that's really exciting. Absolutely. I feel like we're going in the right direction there. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on women athletes or extra pressure on women athletes to succeed? Um, I think that anytime you're going into like that kind of 1%, that 0.001%, yeah. um, the pressure is enormous. Mm -hmm. And how you deal with that is really the question. And that's when what they really present to Ginny Baker on the show. And the different, like the vulnerabilities come with that, the flaws, you know, because you're kind of built up to be this incredible role model. But to be able to actually walk that when you go back into your room at the end of the night is also really, you know, something that I think people struggle with. Did you play any sports growing up? Played sports my whole life. Yep. What did you um, play? I played soccer. I swam. I dove. My dad coached every team that I was on, and I just I loved it. I I didn't do any dancing, which okay. I'm still a little annoyed about because all my <laughs> friends are like graceful and lean, and I'm like, you know, I was a tomboy and. But I can throw a ball. Never too late. Dancing with the stars, maybe one day down the line. Never. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Never. you're a mom now. Do you yeah. think that your kids will, you know, they're little, but maybe you'll encourage them to get involved in sports? I mean, without a question. Yeah. So my son is about to start soccer and mm -hmm. he plays tennis and we'll get my daughter started too. They both swim already. But I just think the team sports is something that is really um, instrumental in growing up and helping to kind of form a well-rounded person. You know, to be able to go onto a team and realize that, you know, it's not just about you, it's about working together and you kind of leave your other stuff on the side and you go in um, just, you know, and the idea of uniting to win, I think is just a really 
positive message. I agree. I played soccer and softball growing up. It yeah. was part of my life. And then when it yeah. wasn't, I felt like I was missing something. It really right. is. Right. Um, I want to get to a couple of uh, Facebook comments. Uh, Hasana says, you are amazing, which is very Thank sweet. Yeah. And uh, Floyd on Facebook mm -hmm. says, I loved you in Heroes, which is uh, which a great show. That, yeah. that aired from like 06 to 2010, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's been a while. And yeah. that was your first major television yeah. show, right? What was it like to be involved it in that? It was. Um, I had been living in New York and I got that script and I thought it was really special and before I was very hesitant to do television just because of the time commitment mm -hmm. you know it's like 10 months a year and so it's it's and it's five days a week when you're doing a network show most of the time um, but I read the script and to play like you know the stripper who's a single mom who's like do whatever she can do to help her son and I just I was kind of just intrigued by it and um, I just kind of rolled the dice and it ended up being the right fit and I'm so glad that I did um, was an incredible experience. And this year actually marks the 15 year anniversary of Legally Blonde. Oh my god! It's unbelievable. Did you guys do anything amazing. special for 15 years? No, so. I was somewhere, I saw it on Instagram and I, I didn't even like get in the game, but I was like, I should have been posting Brooke Wyndham. Yes. I still have like some of her dresses. I have like her classic Dior stuff from the courtrooms. Oh my gosh. So, like, Are they like in your closet somewhere? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Where would she be now, 15 years later, your character? Like Montecito, <laughs> Monaco on her boat, or maybe like she lost it all and she's in like like jail in Bangkok or something. <laughs> <laughs> there is talk about another Legally Blonde, like a third, I know you weren't involved in the second mm -hmm. one, a third one, Reese was talking about it recently. I Reese mean, is amazing, anything she does is so incredible. Is that something if they asked, would you get involved in something like that? Oh my gosh, I would love it, absolutely. Yeah. I'm such a fun character, I'd love to. Like to get involved in Yeah. We also played a great character in Varsity Blues, that was early on, 1999, that's yeah. almost, that's crazy. What were some of your favorite memories from that set? You know, I actually was friends with Amy Smart before mm -hmm. we started filming it, so it was just really exciting that we got to do, like she had done movies before, but my first experience that I really had her to lean on. Um, and I think the friendships that came out of that were something that was really was really special. And uh, Paul Walker, of course, yeah. I mean, just being involved on with something like with him. Yeah, and Ron Lester, and I feel really yeah. lucky that I got to have you know some special moments with them, and I just I think about them and their families quite often. Of course, and I think that's also getting a reboot of some sort, potentially on CMT, on some it level. Sounds, I know, it sounds I like know. everything is getting a reboot. I don't know. I think we're in a nostalgia phase. Everybody yeah. has like, the nostalgia feeling on right. things like that. Right. Okay, I want to get to a couple of more comments. I want to okay. get these in here. Um, Ernesto, I loved you in Resident Evil. Are you returning for the final film? So yes, yeah, so we just finished filming in South Africa. So this fall, um, we went with our six month old daughter, four year old son, my husband, and we went to Cape Town and Johannesburg. Okay. And it was really an incredible shoot. I mean, challenging, but it looked amazing. Um, you know, Africa, South Africa is a place of extremes and just the light and the weather and um, shooting eight weeks and nights was really intense. but. It makes for a movie that looks really good. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. But you know, go back to that and how it's. What's it like when you you know you're working on a set like you know with Pitch yeah. for example. What's yeah. your life like during that series and that very shooting? different yeah. than filming Resident yeah. Evil in South Africa, um, because we were shooting at quarries and swimming in like swamps in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and we were freezing cold and just running. It was a very physical role, um, gun training, stunt training, all that kind of thing. And for something like Pitch, you know, she is a very well put together woman yeah. um, who has fun with that. And I think she's enjoying being on her own, not working in like an agency setting any longer. She's mm -hmm. kind of like her own, you know, company in a way. And that can give, it's just more of a chance to do what you want in your life. So I think that she's having fun with that. So I get to wear really fun clothes right. and that kind of stuff. And, you know, we're shooting about 14 hours a day. So they're not short days. Uh -huh. um, but we're only doing 10 episodes, and I think that that really keeps a great energy on set. It keeps the writers creatively um, really excited and um, inspired, you know, where people can get really tired by the 22nd episode sometimes. Yeah, and it makes people want more. It leaves Absolutely. the fans wanting Nothing a better. more, right? Yes. And I understand that Major League Baseball is super involved in this. How, right. is that, how are they supporting you guys? Yeah, so we're doing it in collaboration with them, and I, that was something that was important to me, actually, when I signed on, because it could be hokey mm -hmm. if we weren't shooting in the real stadiums with the real uniforms um, a lot of the old players are coming in and play on the team and so when you see that we've shot at Petco and Dodgers and we're going up to San Francisco
Francisco, maybe New York. And so when you feel the scope of that, it really, um, there's just like an awe factor and it's very exciting and it brings a level of um, credibility to the show. And you also starred alongside Beyonce in Obsessed. Yes. 19, that was like a, quite a few, a few years ago, not too long ago. What yes. was it like Thank starring? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> starring alongside her. Um, she was amazing. Yeah. It was such a fun, kind of campy movie. Um, and she's just, she's like the queen. They're, it's queen Bay, like come on. You know? Right. Um, and I loved working with her. And she's also the nicest person and so soft-spoken. And I was just, you know. She's incredible. You were kind of like the first Becky with great hair, good hair, right? <laughs> sort of, in a way. There in you film. go. There you go. Did you listen to Lemonade? Have you heard I that? I did. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, so inspiring yeah. and powerful and um, personal and emotional. And I, you know, I'm often asked, like, what's it like to play, you know, a, to get a strong female role? Sure. And I'm like, well, I'm a woman. <laughs> Everyone I know is a female. Every female I know is strong. You know, so, I mean, that's what it is. It's like women being able to be flawed and, you know, having just different sides to our personality and that, you know, you don't have to be boxed, that you're capable of anything and, and having different sides to yourself, I think is just something that needs to be more embraced. I love that. What advice would you give to an up and coming woman or a male mm -hmm. uh, looking to act? You know, the business has changed and I think that now it's a point that I, I wish I had the gift of being a writer, mm -hmm. which I don't. And my husband's an incredible writer and a great actor. Um, Dan Fogelman, who wrote Pitch, is so talented. Um, Kevin Falls, who's writing it, is, is really wonderful. And so people that have that gift, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would say run to it, write your own material and get a camera and set it up. Because right now you, we have these phones, you yeah. can make it and you can do it. Um, I also think that there's a level of, um, you know, just natural kind of real raw things that you can do in that way. If you actually are totally embodying it in the world that you want to make. You mentioned earlier that there's a lot more that you'd like to do. Yeah. What is that? I'm developing a show. Okay. So, can you tell us anything about it? It's very dark. And okay. It's a, and it's a little, it's a little sarcastic. Um, I love playing mean girls. I like can't help it. It's like I'm really, I swear, like the nicest person. <laughs> you but seem really deep sweet. down in there. I like love to tap into that shadow side. And I, mean, I had so many haters in high school that I think that I can honestly now like play that because it was like so brutal on me that I'm like I know what that feels like and I know what you did. So someone like you, I feel like you wouldn't have haters in high school, but I guess everyone has Girls are brutal. Yeah, that's true. Girls it's are true. brutal. I mean, having a daughter now, and I think about that, I'm just like, oh, I don't want her to go through that kind of bullying, because, you know, that does happen. Mm -hmm. But So, yeah, I want to um, I want to develop that. And then, um, you know, I just, for me, I've always wanted to be in more, even like European films that do have that kind of natural, raw feeling that I was talking about. Um, Nothing wrong with it, the glossy, yep. commercial, really fun, you know, movies and shows. Um, but there's also some other things that I want to explore. So, yeah. All right. We'll look forward to that. Uh, a couple more Facebook questions. Mar Stone says, how do you prepare for a role? Depends on the role. Okay. So this was a very last minute for me. Um, I originally wasn't going to work this year um, because of South Africa and my husband's been working. And so we were just like, I'm just going to take a little beat. And then Dan Fogelman gave me this beautiful script. And at first I was like, a TV show about baseball, a female pitcher, like, I don't know. But then I read it, and then I met him, and he showed me um, how uh, the throw like a girl campaign, and all these girls right. that throw like this, and boy thinks a girl throws like this. And I was just like, my, I mean, I just like sat up in my chair, and I was like, I need to do this show. You know, because we need to speak to all these little girls right now that don't think they're good enough. Like, that's crazy to me. So I got really inspired by it. So part of it for me, I'd say number one is being inspired. Okay. Finding okay. that. Um, and I go deep into the backstory. Mm -hmm. You know, the who, what, where, when. And then go from there. Yeah. yeah. Now I like that. Um, Mike says, are there any actual MLB players as guest stars on the show? There are. Um, I think Justin Verlander is doing something. I could get you a couple of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to wait to, we'll have to yeah. wait to watch yeah. and find that out. Surprise. Um, what's that. your favorite <laughs> movie? Um, what's my favorite movie? I love Goonies. Oh yeah, it's so great. I loved um, like old Jessica Lange and Blue Sky. Okay. Um, I loved um. Melancholia, Kirsten Dunst. Okay, yeah, yeah, so Definitely. good. Like, it's such an amazing movie. Yes. She's incredible. Yeah. So a lot, like, runs the gamut. Yeah. It really, really runs the gamut. Yeah. 
Um, what's next for you, Allie? Another Facebook question, but we kind of talked a little bit about that. Right. Uh, anything else coming down the pike that we so didn't talk about? So we'll shoot about? this um, okay. until November. Okay. Then I'll go on press tour for Resident Evil and do that. Um, I'm gonna do a cooking show. Oh, what cooking? So, what? how do you have the time? What's this cooking show about? You know, it's it's like it, I do segments of life, yeah. you know, and when I have time for it, I give it my all, mm -hmm. and then I just have to take a beat on something else. Um, I did a cookbook two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and it took me two years to make it. I was in my kitchen with my friend Tracy, and we just did every recipe, I mean, at least 20 times, over 100 of them that we developed. And it's about dinner parties, because I love throwing parties, and I <clears throat> wanted to share recipes that I knew worked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you spend the time and the money, is there anything worse than when you show up and it's not good? Right. Or Especially when you have guests on. Right. Absolutely. So cooking is my passion. I cook probably three or four nights a week. Um, we throw dinner parties a couple times a month, and it's something I can't wait to do. All right. So well, we look forward to that yeah. and very much look forward to Pitch. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming in today. Yeah. And don't forget to check in. Watch Pitch September 22nd on Fox. And we'll Thank catch you. you the next stream. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. So fun. Um, I'm really excited to see the rest of this. I agree. I played soccer and softball growing up. It was yeah. part of my life. And then when yeah. it wasn't, I felt like I was missing something. It really right. is. Right. Um, I want to get to a couple of uh, Facebook comments. Uh, Hassana says, you are amazing, which is very Thank sweet. You. And uh, Floyd on Facebook mm -hmm. says, I loved you in Heroes, which is uh, which a great show. That, yeah. that aired from like 06 to 2010, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's been a while. And that yeah. was your first major television yeah. show, right? What was it like to be involved it in that? It was. Um, I had been living in New York and I got that script and I thought it was really special. And before I was very hesitant to do television just because of the time commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 10 months a year. And so it's, it's, and it's five days a week when you're doing a network show, most of the time. Um, but I read the script and to play like, you know, the stripper who's a single mom, who's like doing whatever she can do to help her son. And I just, I was kind of just intrigued by it. And um, I just kind of rolled the dice and it ended up being the right fit. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, was an incredible experience. And this year actually marks the 15 year anniversary of Legally Blonde. Oh my god! It's unbelievable. Did you guys do anything amazing. special for 15 years? No, so. I was somewhere, I saw it on Instagram and I, I didn't even like get in the game, but I was like, I should have been posting Brooke Wyndham. Yeah. I still have like some of her dresses. I have like her classic, do so many parallels, I yeah. guess, within the story and in our, our personal lives. Yeah, speak about that a little bit with Hollywood. I mean, I yeah. feel like, you know, you've been, you've had a nice long Hollywood career so far, a yeah. lot more to come, yeah. but being up against the male, in a male dominated industry in right. some way. Well, I mean, yes, I agree with that. I've been very lucky that I feel like I love the characters that I've gotten to play. There are still many that I still want to explore. I was just talking about it last night that I still know that there's things that I can't wait to kind of dig my teeth into. Um, I think the thing that does rub me, though, is we talk about things like pay inequality and things like that. When you're talking about the exact same job but a different pay, um, it's crazy that these things are still happening. And so when we talk about like breaking the glass ceiling and that doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your sexual orientation, you should be able to be anything you want in this world. I love that. Um, just coming off of the Olympics, though, that was yeah. great. That's reinvigorating seeing yes. very young women like Gabby Douglas. Um, oh, yeah. Right? I mean, especially women of color, that's really exciting. Absolutely. I feel like we're going in the right direction there. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on women athletes or extra pressure on women athletes to succeed? Um, I think that anytime you're going into like that kind of 1%, that 0.001%, yeah. um, the pressure is enormous. Mm -hmm. And how you deal with that is really the question. And that's when what they really present to Ginny Baker on the show. And the different, like the vulnerabilities come with that, the flaws, you know, because you're kind of built up to be this incredible role model. But to be able to actually walk that when you go back into your room at the end of the night is also really, you know, something that I think people struggle with. Did you play any sports growing up? Played sports my whole life. Yep. What did you um, play? I played soccer. I swam. I dove. My dad coached every team that I was on, and I just I loved it. I I didn't do any dancing, which okay. I'm still a little annoyed about because all my <laughs> friends are like graceful and lean, and I'm like, you know, I was a tomboy and. But I can throw a ball. Never too late. Dancing with the stars, maybe one day down the line. Never. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Never. you're a mom now. Do you yeah. think that your kids will, you know, they're little, but maybe you'll encourage them to get involved in sports? I mean, without a question. Yeah. So my son is about to start soccer and mm -hmm. he plays tennis and we'll get my daughter started too. They both swim already. But I just think the team sports is something that is really um, instrumental in growing up and helping to kind of form a well-rounded person. You know, to be able to go onto a team and realize that, you know, it's not just about you. It's about working together and you kind of leave your other stuff on the side when you go in um, just, you know, and the idea of uniting to win, I think it's just a really positive message. That's really the, the underbelly of our show is that really kind of inspirational 
hopeful feeling. Do you think we're close to that? Have seeing that in real life? I really do. I yeah. mean, if you look at a male and a female, you're not going to be able to compare when it comes to strength, but with technique you can. Mm -hmm. And so she's a screwball and a knuckleball, and you know, she's technique. And um, I think that would be the way that it would happen. And I think baseball would be the sport. Great. Well, I just want to tell the fans out there that we're live. Che check in with your comments, your questions, and I'll get to them on the air. Um, I really like, I watched the pilot episode, I really like what I Thank see you. so far. Uh, the woman who plays the pitcher, she's wonderful. What was it like working alongside so her? So Kylie Bunbury, yep. the luminous, beautiful, it's like she she's literally gorgeous. has a light within her. Yes. She like just glows and she like, she's so wonderful. When we first met, um, we got along instantly and she is kind of what's happening to her in the show is happening to her in real life. You know, like she becomes like insta famous on the show and it's happening to her right now because Pitch is getting so much attention and she's doing her first talk shows and her endorsements and really kind of living also the pressures of when so many people expect so much from you. Sure, there is that pressure, but I mean, I feel like it's getting yeah. so much buzz so far. So, exactly. so far, so good. So far, amazing. And, and just the fact that we're living. I'm joined by actress Allie Larder. Allie, so great to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. I know you're here just a quick time in New That's York right. and you're going back to set, and the set that you're going back to is the set of Pitch, a That's new right. Fox show that premieres later this month. It centers around a woman who is uh, the first Major League Baseball pitcher. Mm -hmm. I love this premise. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about what attracted you to, the, to this role? You don't play her. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of things. One, I mean, we're living in a time of like reboots and procedural dramas, and mm -hmm. this is an original story. And what's also really exciting about it is that it's a what if. We could be one step before this really happens. So it's a story of Ginny Baker and about how she becomes the first female pitcher in the major leagues. And I play Amelia Slater, who's her agent, and I had been working in Hollywood, and I come kind of like disillusioned with the world. It's like mm -hmm. vanity and um, a lot of superficial things. And she sees this clip of Ginny, and she believes that with her help, they could accomplish great things together. So it's really a story of watching these women navigate a very male-centric world. Um, but also about the fact that you know the little girls out there can believe that they can be anything they want to be. Sure. If you put your heart to it, your mind to it, if you work hard, the sky's the limit. And that kind of